So, safe to say this isn't a very popular question. I've only asked it once. Here's the model answer to their question. Please don't sue me, IB. And before we deconstruct that, and by the way, you're welcome to pause it and read it. Before we deconstruct that and I try to explain it, you need to understand these terms. A polar protic solvent is a solvent that can make hydrogen bonds and arguably donate a proton, depending on what definition you look at. Uh, so we're going to use water and a polar aprotic. A in this case means without a proton. A polar aprotic solvent is a polar solvent uh, that cannot make hydrogen bonds and arguably cannot donate a proton, such as methoxymethane. And the key term here as well is solvation. Solvation happens when uh, the solvent surrounds an atom, a molecule, or ion in a cage. <laughs> Johnny Cage. And that reduces its reactivity. Alrighty. Deep breath, here we go. So I'm going to break this video into four parts to explain the four possible combinations. Let's start with SN1 and just recall one, two, three, bang. So SN1 is a two step process with tertiary haloalkanes, and bang means it's the faster of the SNs. Alrighty, so this is a tertiary haloalkane. Let's say that that's fluorine on top, uh, and it's attached to a carbon with three other carbons directly attached, a tertiary haloalkane. And this is the nucleophile. Let's say this is OH minus, and it's gonna substitute. This and this are gonna substitute, which is another name for swapping. Now it's in two steps, this. The first step, is the fluoride breaks off. Now these are very reactive species that have been made and almost certainly they'll bond back together again. So if you can put a solvent in that once this bond is broken these will be stabilized then it's going to favor this process, this SM1 process which has two steps. So the fluoride iron will be trapped in a cage, and that's the IB word, of these water molecules, these protic polar solvents. This is a, a negative, and the, so the positive ends of the water molecule are going to point towards it. This has now been stabilized by solvation. The water molecules have made hydrogen bonds with this central ion and made it more stable. So it's more likely to break off because it's kind of going to be caught in this cage and made stable. And that also applies to the carbocation. This is now positive here. This carbocation will attract water molecules as well, and the negative end of the water molecules will be attracted towards that positive part of the carbocation, and that will stabilize that. Both of that is good news for SM1. The water has stabilized the carbocation, and the water has stabilized the halide ion that has come off. The second step is, well, this is going to be moved out of the way. The second step is a hydroxide ion will come in, but water and hydroxide also interact. So the polar protic water comes along. This is OH minus, the whole thing's negative. So again, it's going to be surrounded by this cage of water molecules. And that's not a good thing. Why is that? Well, now this has been stabilized by solvation. This is now less reactive. In order to react, it has to break these hydrogen bonds that have formed between the OH minus and the water. It has to break out of this cage in order to react. So the fact that this is more stable than expected due to this cage and the fact it has to break out, that's a bad thing when it comes to this reaction mechanism. So SM1, the two good things are that the water will stabilize the carbocation and it will stabilize the halide ion. And the bad thing 
is that you've also stabilized this hydroxide ion that you want to react. Let's look at an example with an aprotic polar solvent. So let's say this is an aprotic polar solvent. So the bonds between the molecules aren't that strong. It's just a dipole-dipole attraction. Whereas with water, the bonds that were made were hydrogen bonds. For example, between the hydrogen here and the oxygen on that one. Hydrogen bonds are, are stronger than dipole-dipole interactions. So let's reset. The first part of SN1 is the halide ion comes off. Now remember last time the water came in and stabilized these. But these molecules, for example, methoxymether, these aren't very polar and they're not going to make very strong bonds between the solvent and the halide ion. So they're not going to stabilize them much at all. So now when this breaks apart, they are not having enhanced stability by solvation. So that means it's less likely to happen. This is now unstable, and this is now unstable. Well, you know what? So they'd probably go back again. That's the bad news. Well, the good news, here's the hydroxide ion again. Now, before, that was in a cage of water, which was stopping it reacting. But with these aprotic polar solvents here, the bonds that it's now caught in this cage are much weaker because dipole, because the dipoles from these molecules here are weaker than the hydrogen bonds that were there from the water. The water before made much stronger hydrogen bonds. Here, it's weaker dipole bonds. So that's good. So with this aprotic polar solvent, you've got two bad things and one good thing. Ah, so this is unlikely to happen. It's less likely to happen. SN1 reactions use protic polar solvents, such as water. Because there were two smiley faces and one sad face before, and now there's two sad faces and one smiley face. Not IB terminology. I'll give you that at the end. So let's look at the second two permutations. We've got an SN2 reaction now, which is one step with primary haloalkanes. So here's a simple primary haloalkane. Let's say that that's a fluoromethane. And there's my hydroxide ion. Now this happens in one step. So the hydroxide ion is attracted to the slightly positive central carbon because this is electronegative it's pulling the electrons up towards there leaving a positive charge there and in one step which is hard to do with two hands you go to there so that was one step SN2 is one step so let's see what the effect of solvents would be. Let me reset. All righty, so if I've got water, so the oxygen from the water molecules is going to be attracted not very strongly over towards this molecule here. And the carbocation before had a positive charge, so the oxygens were attracted over and solvated it. But now they're barely attracted at all. Because, to be honest, this barely has a dipole compared to the other molecule. The other molecule, that was big, fat, one plus. Now this is slightly plus, slightly minus. So the water isn't really going to help here. Well, let's look over at this molecule, the hydroxide ion. Now, it's going to be a problem. This is negative, OH minus. And so this is going to be caught in the cage. And so that's bad in terms of this reaction. 
This now has to break out of the cage, has to break the hydrogen bonds in order to react. So a polar protic solvent, such as water, is bad for SN2 because the nucleophile is trapped in a cage of this polar protic solvent and it needs more energy to break the bonds to get out and react. Resetting again. Now I've got an aprotic polar solvent. So this isn't as attracted to the molecules as the water it has a smaller dipole. So again, it's not attracted that much. They're not attracted that much to solvent molecules to this fluoromethane. But they're also not attracted that much to the nucleophile, the OH minus. Uh -huh. Aha which means the cage that's formed is weaker and this can more easily break out of the cage. So for SN2, aprotic polar solvents are good. And we're done.